Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. In this episode, we're taking a look at the HyperDeck Studio Mini from Blackmagic Design. This is a SD card recorder um, for your program out feed, perhaps from your ATEM Television Studio HD. We looked at that last week. You can check out the video here. And this kind of partners nicely with it as it is a one third uh, rack unit design. So it'll sit either three of them in your 19 inch rack uh, case or perhaps this and the Television Studio HD sit nicely together. Um, but let's first of all just take a little tour around the outside of it. So on the front we have um, two slots for your SD cards. I have one in there right now as you can see. Um, so you can record to one and then whenever that fills up it'll fall on to the next one. You have some controls here so play, stop, uh, jog, record and then um, forward and back and then menu and set and these are all for obviously for controlling the device. And then you have a nice little good quality screen here and a little wheel for uh, navigating your way through the menus and for jogging through um, the video files that are on there. So yeah, that's pretty much the front. Um, there's not much to show there whenever it's switched off. So we'll just get to the back and get back to the front in a minute. Next up, you have a, uh, a built-in power supply. So all you need is the cable. Um, it doesn't come with a or with the device, so be sure to pick one up. And then you have USB-C, that'll be used to update the software. Um, Ethernet, uh, you can also do PoE Plus. So if you have a router that does PoE Plus, then you can actually power the device and communicate with it over the Ethernet. Um, other things that will be used for is controlling it with the ATEM software, uh, software control, and also um, FTP to take stuff on and off the SD cards. And we will get to that in, later in the video. Um, next up, you have reference in and out, that, so you can sync a few of these devices together if that's something you want to do for digital signage and things like that. Next up, we have the HDMI out on this. Now, that's something I talked about last week, which is a nice little fix for the ATEM Television Studio HD. It only has program out um, over STI. So what you can do is loop um, your signal through this. You may already do that already to record. And then you can use the HDMI out from this as your HDMI out of the program. So it's really nice to have. Uh, finally, you have SDI in and then two SDI outputs. Um, again, you can just use these for whatever you want. Um, so that's pretty much a look at the device itself. I think the best thing to do next would be to plug it in and just have a little play with a few of the best things I like about it. So we've got the device all up and running. Um, you can see there that uh, 1080i50 is written on the device because I have my camera coming in at 1080i50. Uh, it will auto detect whatever the signal is. In my case, that's what it is. This can be used to record up to 2160p30, so six gig SDI. Um, I'm not really running anything at that, at that rate. 1080i or 1080p25, 1080p50 is probably as much as I'll hit. So that's probably why the device is as expensive as it is because it's kind of like for the 4K market as well. Um, but it's also a, a great product, so you kind of have to bite the bullet and pay a bit extra for something you might not need or maybe you'll need in the future. You can hear the, the noise of the fans just running in the background there. Again, something that you might not sit this close to, so it might not be a problem for your setup, but it is something to be aware of that they do, they do make noise. And if you have this paired with a couple of other devices, it'll gather some noise. So it may be something you want to stick in a different room or in the corner of the room. So I'm just going to hit record then and um, just do a little test recording while we're sitting here, something small, and then I'll hit stop on that. Um, like I said before, if you've got two cards in there and one fills up, it'll just jump onto the next one uh, and start recording on that one as well. I just did some sample recordings at 1080p 50, and you can see on this graph here roughly how much time you'll get out of a 128 gigabyte card. So you can judge for yourself how many cards you might need. This is just sort of for reference, um, but hopefully it gives you a general idea of how much you will uh, be able to fill up on a card. As for SD cards, there is a uh, link in the description below that shows the recommended cards. In my case, I use Extreme Pro from SanDisk. These are the 128, um, 95 megasecond cards. Um, they've worked flawlessly for me. Uh, you're just probably better just sticking with the recommended list. Again, you'll find it in the link below. And I would just buy those cards 
and uh, and use those. This is uh, works well for me at um, like I said 1080p 50. If you're pushing into the 4K stuff, then you may find that that's not fast enough. Um, honestly, I can't tell based on what I'm using them for. So again, I would recommend just checking out that list and making sure you buy the ones that are recommended. So one of the other cool things I wanted to show you in this video was the FTP. You can take files on and off the SD cards on this device over your network. So I have this plugged into my uh, router, which is also plugged into my laptop. So on my computer here, I have FileZilla running and I can just type in the IP address of my HyperDAC um, and then it will come up with this file, slot one. And I can see a few little sample recordings I just made. And uh, what I can do then is just copy that over to a folder on my desktop. Uh, it works really well. Um, obviously the size of the file will determine how fast it's gonna copy for you. Uh, what this can be used for is, you know, accessing one that you've put on the roof and you wanna put a file on it to do some playback. Or in my case, maybe I'll record everything onto my HyperDeck and I forgot my SD card reader. So I can copy the stuff off the SD cards um, onto my laptop through the network. Uh, you can just imagine what kind of stuff this might be useful for. And if I go over to that same file in my desktop, um, up at the top here, you can see there I've done lots of testing over the last few days. But in this file here, you can see uh, this exact video clip that I just shot a few seconds ago. So there it is, it's copied over. Um, it only took a few seconds because it was such a small video file. That's how easy it is to take the files off the device. And then you just do the opposite if you wanna put the file on it again. You just hop over to uh, FileZilla or your favorite FTP client and you take um, a file, let's say this one here. I have a test I wanna send over there. And it'll just take, in this case, a few seconds because again, it's a small enough file. And once the file is transferred over to your HyperDeck, um, you can just cycle through all the uh, all the files you've got saved on there. Here's one that I uh, that I copied over, and then I can press play on that. And there you can see uh, just a little test clip I did a few days ago. Um, so it's as simple as that. Getting you know uh, something you wanted to play out, you want to send that over to your HyperDeck through the network, and you can do it. Uh, so let's just talk about a few pros and a few cons of the HyperDeck Studio Mini. For me, pros wise, small and rack mountable. Like I said, you can do three of these side by side in your uh, rack case, or you can do one of these and the ATEM Television Studio HD. That's what I'm doing for my new rack case. So that's one huge uh, pro. Also the fact that it adds a HDMI program output to your setup, if that's something you're lacking within the, um, within the ATEM Television Studio HD. Now, if you just want a HDMI um, output over program, then you, maybe you just want to use a HDMI to, uh, or SDI to HDMI converter. Um, but if you're already buying one of these, then that's definitely a pro. Um, other things, uh, you know, kind of cheap media. SD cards are pretty cheap to buy um, a bunch of them. The only thing is they do fill up fast if you are using like I am 1080p 50. Um, if you're shooting that 4K as well, these SD cards, they're gonna fill up fast, just like you saw from that graph before. If I'm doing a whole day conference on, um, on this thing, I'm gonna to have to bring a few SD cards with me. So while they are pretty cheap to pick up, um, they will fill up fast. So I guess that's a pro and a con at the same time, that one. Uh, the last thing is that FTP transfer. For me, that's really nice. I can just sit back and transfer things back and forth without having to uh, take the SD card in and out constantly. Um, I haven't really tried like massive files yet to see how long they'll take. Um, if that's practical, but for little small things that I want to do some play out or I just want to you know, do a little bit of testing back and forth, um, I find it worked really well and it's very easy to set up as you've seen there. The downsides, the cons, like I said, the SD cards, they're going to fill up fast. Um, that's my problem. I can shoot in 1080p 25 instead and then I'll have a bit more room for the SD card. Um, but if you want to get a 256 gigabyte card of SD, it's it's not that cheap really, I guess. And uh, you, you bring a few of those with you and then you've added up um, a considerable amount of money. So like I say, it's it, it sits on the fence of pro and con, the SD card thing. And the final thing is if you aren't using the 4K, this thing is pretty expensive in my mind. Um, that's a feature that I don't need. Uh, it would be nice maybe to see a, a HD version of this only up to 1080p uh, 50 or 60. Um, that could be really nice for people like me who don't really, who want to buy this along with the ATEM Television Studio HD, but don't necessarily need that 4K stuff. Uh, 
it just seems like I'm paying extra for something that um, I don't necessarily want in this case. Um, so that's pretty much it, pros and cons. Um, I'm gonna do more testing, more videos of this coming up soon. So let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular that I missed out or that I should talk about. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.